Coming up on NCC News, a look inside at what Disney plans has for Star Wars above coming to America and a new James Bond movie showing in theaters. These stories and more after these messages. With each stop, a sea of screaming faithful greeted the pontiff. This organization, do you know what it's called? Its name is Spectre. You know who links them all? Me. Welcome, James. What took you so long? I fainted at the sight of blood. Me, a nurse? I had no idea that's what I'd be when I went to NCC. But NCC is not like other colleges. NCC has a student success center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. I'm so happy. Nurse Robbins, I created that. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. I'm Christopher Grisodomo. And I'm Isabel Serapine. Our first story leads us to the state of affairs of the Paris attacks in Paris, France. Confirmed dead in uh, what is clearly a Paris terror attack. And who knows how many people have been injured in uh, explosions, gunfire, AK-47s in multiple parts of the French capital. Uh, Evan Perez, our justice reporter, report is getting more information. The report shows a devastating well. number. Evan, what are you learning? Well, Wolf, we know that uh, counterterrorism uh, officials here in the United States have convened uh, secure conference calls around the country uh, to try to gather information. They don't know yet what they're dealing with and really to assess whether there's any danger here to U.S. cities. So far, there's no indication of any actual threats uh, here in the United States, but it is something that they're keeping an eye on. And Wolf, immediately, uh, what, what they're looking at here is, uh, again, from a distance, having very little information uh, on the ground yet from Paris, uh, what they're immediately suspicion uh, from officials that I've talked to is that, you know, we, the, the French have long been worried and the U.S. has long been worried about returnees, people who uh, have gone to fight in Syria and Iraq and have returned. And so that's the first place where everybody is looking, uh, looking at the population of people who uh, the French have been concerned about. They've had a very hard time keeping track of, which Jim Shudo and, and Paul Krinkshack have been talking a little bit about in the last hours. So that's where this investigation begins. Again, there's no confirmation yet of, of who actually carried this out, but obviously the coordinated, uh, uh, the appearance of coordination in these attacks is not escaping anyone's notice. U.S. counterterrorism officials are very much uh, keeping an eye on this, Wolf. Body. Hurricane Joaquin has struck against a ship called the El Faro in the Bahamas. In the aftermath of the storm, a lot of debris is washed ashore. Some of the materials identified caught much attention of the family of a crew member, Samuel Lonnie Jordan, while one of the U.S. Navy ships searches the ocean, seeking out the missing ship's wreckage. Body wash and other toiletries. This is what is washed ashore in the Bahamas. The debris has gotten the attention of Lonnie Samuels Jordan's family. He was a crew member aboard the ship. His brother, also named Lonnie, wants answers. We really need closure. We asked Tote Maritime if the debris is from the ship. We received this statement. Tote Services is aware of the situation and is working with the relevant authorities to verify that the material is from the El Faro. A NTSB spokesperson says he has hasn't received any direct reports of debris being recovered, but he is interested in any debris related to vital systems like life-saving equipment. Right now, this Navy ship is searching for wreckage of the missing ship. Those white containers hold some of the specialized equipment crews will be using to search for the ship itself. As the search continues, Samuel says the family won't believe their loved one is gone until there is concrete evidence. Until then, they are staying positive. All we can do is hope and pray right now. Due to Hungary closing up, refugees travel from Slovenia and leave to cross Austria. No one really knows when the crossing of numbers will end. One thing is set on their minds. They all go to find life somewhere else in Europe. 
sunshine and rain, refugees keep coming, this time through Slovenia into the small village of Spielfeld on the Austrian border. After Hungary closed its doors with razor wire fencing, this has become the new road to Europe. The border is now staffed 24 hours with Austrian police and army pulling extra hours to provide security and medical care. Volunteers cook vats of soup and curry. No one knows when the numbers crossing will slow down, but Austrian police are preparing for the long haul. It's a tough situation, says this officer. It takes time and a lot of manpower. We have reinforcements coming in from all over Austria, and we have to work together. The personal family life needs to be put on hold for a while, but this is the situation, and we will manage it on the Slovenian-Austrian border. Pope Francis was invited to visit the United States. He goes to Washington, D.C. to address Congress and is welcomed by President Barack Obama. Everywhere he goes across the nation, the point of, of greeted by crowds of many people and all of them, Americans are blessed by his words in the ways of the Lord. I am most grateful for your invitation to address in this joint session of Congress in the land of the free at the home of the brave. Pope Francis presided over an historic moment for the American Catholic Church. With each stop, a sea of screaming faithful greeted the pontiff. Earlier in the day, President Obama extended a warm welcome to the Holy Father. We see a living example of Jesus' teachings, a leader whose moral authority comes not just through words, but also through deeds. God bless America. Now to the world of sports. Back at least two months, the New York Mets kicked off the World Series starting their first game against the Kansas City Royals. And a Mets player, Daniel Murphy, is excited to play baseball in the World Series for his first time. World Series time. The New York Mets and Kansas City Royals open the fall classic yeah. tonight in KC. Good ribs. Mm -hmm. Both teams <laughs> equally hungry for a World Series title. The Royals last won one in 85. Those were the George Brett days. The Mets in 1986. Long time coming for both teams. Mookie then. Wilson. CNN's Andy <laughs> Scholes has a preview. Andy, who you got? Uh, you know, Chris, with the pitching staff the Mets have, you know, I just can't see them losing this series. I'm going to go New York in five. A lot of people picking the Royals, though, to win this series. But, you know, the big question on everyone's mind coming in tonight's game, guys, is what inning will set Mets second baseman Daniel Murphy hit a home run in? You know, Murphy's homered in a record six straight postseason games. He has seven home runs in the playoffs, which is one shy of the all-time record. Uh, Murphy's a guy that's never hit more than 14 home runs in an entire season. He can't he says he can't even explain where this recent power surge is coming from, but hey, he's very excited to be playing in his first World Series. Three months ago, the Norwalk Symph Symphony Orchestra was making music for the Tchaikovsky Festival, which began their new season. During the semester, the orchestra's conductor, Jonathan Yates, was interviewed at NCC prior to the concert at Norwalk Town Hall, and he can tell us more about it than any of us can. Here now in his announcement to the Tchaikovsky Festival. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Yates, music director of the Norwalk Symphony Orchestra, and I'd like to tell you about the opening concert of our 76th season, Tchaikovsky Festival. It's taking place on October 17th at 8 p.m. in beautiful Norwalk Concert Hall. So, we are performing two of his best-loved works, his violin concerto and his final symphony, the sixth, the Pathétique. We are bringing in an incredible soloist, Jennifer Frouchy. We begin with a little bit of lighter fare, called the Pas de, de Bluebird from Sleeping Beauty. It'll be familiar to any of you who know the Disney movie. Because Tchaikovsky is synonymous with ballet, we thought it was important to include a little bit of ballet music as well. So again, the Tchaikovsky Festival on October 17th, 8 p.m., Norwalk Concert Hall. I very much hope to see you there. Please come find me afterwards and tell me how you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. The Fairfield County Chorale sings once more. This season, they have another concert coming up, and every Monday they've been practicing and rehearsing for it. Here are two interviews with their conductor, David Rosenmeyer, and their president, Ricky Davis, on what the chorale will be performing.
We are preparing a very exciting concert. It's going to have Bach's great Magnificat in D. We're also we're going to do a cantata by Bach and a very seldomly heard song by Mendelssohn, a really good orchestra like we always do. We're looking to fill the hall and we're really, really excited with the feedback that we've already gotten. Uh, we're going to have a great orchestra, fantastic soloists, and we're getting right into gear. We really hope that you'll be there to enjoy this fantastic holiday performance with all of us. Coming up, College Choir and the Performing Arts Festival and more stories after these messages. What college are you going to? I don't know. What do you want to be? I don't know. My parents want me to be an architect. Architect? Yeah, but it's my future. I want to do something that turns me on. What turns you on? I don't know. We know NCC has a student success center where counselors assist every student in creating a future. You'd make a cute pirate. I don't know. We know. Be who you want to be. Create your future at NCC. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. The Norwalk Community College Choir and their conductor, Christine Magone, are at it again. Every semester, they search for many different songs, and everyone in a choir takes a vote on which one to sing. Here now are some of the clips of what they've been up to. The always comes up with various pieces of music. This time, they're harmonizing to tunes such as Therapy, A La Nanita Nana, Transylvania Mania, Lean On Me, and The Bella's Finals. They recently changed the title of Transylvania Mania to NCC Mania for the Performing Arts Festival. Watch and learn. What will they think of next? Last month, Norwalk Community College opened their fourth annual Performing Arts Festival. Many students in music and theater classes auditioned and participated in this event. They did scenes and songs like What Is This Feeling from the Broadway show Wicked and the Academy Award winning hit Glory from the movie Selma. Here is now their director Christine Mangone and a few NCC student performers to show us their talents. Hello, I'm Christine, and I'm directing the Performing Arts Festival, which takes place on Tuesday, November 24th, which is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving at 5.30 p.m. The Performing Arts Festival includes work from classes, uh, such as choir, acting class, and music theory, and then it also includes scenes and songs outside of classes. So we have songs from different musicals and um, different short plays uh, that, uh, that students are performing.
Lakeland TV Club is open on Wednesday afternoons to all filming courses at North Community College and anyone who would ever be interested in making movies. Here now is your president, Leslie Bouchard, to explain more about the club and what they do. So the TV club is a part of the TV and film production courses here at the college. What we're focusing on this year is being more involved with the students as a whole and not just the students in the communication courses. We want them to be a part of what it is that we are doing. We want them to contribute to the projects that we're doing. Um, one of the projects we're working on right now is the Norwalk Symphony. We're creating an educational video for them. So we have done on-site locations, and we've also had them here in studio to talk about what the Norwalk Symphony is. Um, another, another program that we're working on is collaborating with The Voice. The Voice is the on-campus newspaper. They want to be able to produce, I suppose you can say, a, a digital broadcast. So they will be coming into the studio, they will be anchoring these stories that they've written about things that have happened here on campus, and the TV club will help and support them with the behind the scenes stuff. So working in the control room, um, running the footage, just to make sure that it looks really professional. And it's the first time that we've actually collaborated with another club on campus, so it makes it really special that we're working together. A lot of bake sales have been going on throughout the semester at Nora Community College. One of them in particular was the Spooky Sweets and Treats. Leslie Bouchard was one of the students in charge of them and was interviewed on the progress of that event. Let's find out what she has to say and what's, we see what's aligned at the table. So a fun fundraiser that we did this semester is we did the Spooky Sweets and Treats um, bake sale. I'm part of the club. Yeah, I don't see you over here. What you said? I don't see you right. It did really well, actually. We made um, over the anticipated threshold, um, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, people brought in different treats and stuff and we just we had a really great time and it worked out and it's the first time that we've actually done something like that so it was a pretty proud moment for us as a club. I'm part of the club! Yeah, I don't see you over here. What you said? I don't see you right. Next up, next up, we will find out what everyone gives thanks to on Thanksgiving, see a preview of the new James Bond movie, get an inside peek at Disney making plans that have to do with Star Wars, and meet the director behind today's broadcast all after these messages. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <coughs> Michael Adams? Here! Michael Adams? Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Getting closer to nature? Can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org.
I'm thankful for cheese. What is everybody else thankful for? Other folks are mostly thankful for the same thing, family and friends, etc. Over Thanksgiving, our broadcast director filmed his family and friends to learn about what they have given thanks to. So let's sit back and watch the show. Well, this Thanksgiving, I am grateful that my children have um, a place to go for Thanksgiving so that I can go and be with my friend who is sick and is unable to come and have Thanksgiving with me. So I'm grateful to be able to share that and that it's going to work out for the rest of my family. That's what I'm grateful for. I'm thankful for having two wonderful boys, a beautiful, wonderful wife, living in a wonderful house, in a wonderful country that has lots of freedoms that we're willing to fight for, and we're, we're thankful for um, our health, um, we're thankful for um, just our, how we feel about life in general, which is very good. I'm thankful for the food and my family and the country that I live in and freedom. I'm thankful that the people I care about most are safe and uh, healthy this holiday season. Happy for family and friends and blessed with good health and wishing everybody a happy new year. I'm thankful for my family especially and my family is spread out. My parents are in western Pennsylvania, my brother's in Texas, um, but I know that they are always present and supporting me. But over the years I've come to realize that um, it's not only family that supports one and upholds one, but it's our friends as well. And so I'm really grateful for my friends, especially my friends that are close by who can be there at a moment's notice. So family, friends, and I guess last would be my dog, Honey. Her unconditional love is something that's quite extraordinary and I can't imagine life without it. I'm thankful that I live in a country that is free, where we're allowed to express our ideas and opinions without any worry, and that we listen to one another and let each person in our country be what they want to be. And that's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for uh, seeing all the family together and all that sort of thing. And yeah, that's the way it goes. The name Ladies Bond, James Bond, 007 License to Kill, the newest James Bond movie starring Daniel Craig as 007 himself is now in theaters. Here's a little history for you. The film's title, Spectre, comes from the name of Eve, the evil organization which the original James Bond portrayed by Sean Connery fought against back in the first films. Here is a sneak preview of the movie. Let's take a look at 007's next mystery. The latest James Bond film is called Spectre. In the film, 007 uncovers a secret sinister organization. This organization, do you know what it's called? Its name is Spectre. As he investigates Spectre, Bond discovers a connection between himself and the leader of the group. And do you know who links them all? Me. Welcome, James. What took you so long? Spectre is rated PG-13. For now showing, I'm Jeremy Roth. Before the Walt Disney Company bought Lucasfilms, they made attractions based on the Star Wars and Indiana Jones movies with the approval of George Lucas in partnership with them at Disneyland, Walt Disney World, Tokyo Disneyland, and Euro Disney, which is now called Disneyland Paris. Now that they have acquired Lucasfilms, the adventure in a galaxy far, far away continues as not only as a new Star Wars movie comes out in theaters this month, but also Disney reveals their plans to create Star Wars themed lands at Disney parks.
Stepping into a galaxy far, far away will soon be a reality now that Disney is adding new Star Wars themed lands to Disneyland in Anaheim and Disney World in Orlando. They're promising they won't only include sights and sounds, but also tastes of the popular franchise. The lands will have two signature attractions, including the ability to take the controls of the Millennium Falcon. I know as Star Wars fan, we grew up and we put ourselves in the situations. We are Luke Skywalker, we are Han Solo, and to actually be a part of it this time is going to be brilliant. It's going to be really, really exciting. Also announced an adventure that puts guests in the middle of a climactic battle. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, meeting the director, the film and the TV student one is, who has big dreams for, in his mind for his future. He's been a Disney fan all of his life and longs to be part of the world of Walt Disney and his company built long ago. Now we will all meet the director of this broadcast, James Bell. Hello my friends, I am James Bell and I'm the one directing this broadcast. Most of you are wondering why I am taking the film and TV course. It's one of the things that'll help me on my path to getting to the Walt Disney Company. What's my specific style as a director? What's my pattern? My style is sort of like Walt Disney's which takes us into uh, many different worlds. As a film student, there have been many films that inspired me. Most of them are Disney. I grew up watching them. My favorites are Steamboat Willie, The Sword in the Stone, Winnie the Pooh, Song of the South, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Cinderella, Little Mermaid, Peter Pan, 101 Dalmatians, Pocahontas, Dumbo, Bambi, Alice in Wonderland, Lady and the Tramp, The Jungle Book, Tron, The Black Cauldron, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Toy Story, Tarzan, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, Aladdin, Mulan, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Beauty and the Beast, Pinocchio, The Lion King, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, The Three Musketeers, Mickey and the Beanstalk, and Fantasia. And I would also count the Kingdom Hearts video game series as a Disney story. I was born in France. I'm autistic. My ultimate goal in life is to find my place in the history of Disney. To make my very own Disney film and star in it and direct it and be the future of the world of Disney itself. What I would suggest for the next uh, generations of filmmakers is to follow your dreams, follow your heart, believe in your imagination, and see the magic within you. And uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Thank you very much. Please join us next time for more NCC News. I'm Isabel Serapine. And I'm Christopher Grisodomo. Thank you for joining us. Good night.